Hello everybody, welcome to Chin Fat. Sorry it's been a while since I've posted any episodes. I've uh, just been kind of busy with all the awesome things going down lately. Um, anyway, so you would think that I'd be trapped in my home and have lots and lots of time, but it's been quite the opposite. Uh, I guess I've been one of those essential workers, quote unquote. So, uh, to continue on the series here, on the on my uh, lesson series here, I'm going to start teaching some, some core editing stuff here. We're going to kind of eventually get into effect work and other things, sound mixing, other things as well. But right now, I'm going to be going over uh, some editing. This episode is going to be on editing a project, just kind of pulling together a project visually. Uh, in the, the next few episodes, I'm going to be doing syncing dialogue, and then I'm going to be getting into editing dialogue as well. Uh, but right now, I'm going to start a new project. i got some media, and I'm going to share this. And I'm going to share this uh, with you guys um, in the description. If you want to download uh, the media, you're welcome to. I'll have a Google Drive link that you can download the footage. But I've got this uh, folder called the Mirror. When you uh, when you download it, it's gonna uh, you, you can extract it. And it'll have some files in it. But I'm going to save my project here. I'm going to select the folder, and I'm going to save this one called the Mirror Project. We based this one off of a. This was kind of a student project that we we based on a, a two sentence horror film online. Uh, so you'll you'll see the plot here, and then. In a minute, but but let's get into editing here. I'm going to import my footage here. So I create a new project. I'm going to double click in there and, and import my footage, and import my footage here. I'm going to go to the video tab here. I'm going to import that entire folder. That video tab right there contains all the video that I want. So I'm just going to select that and hit import folder. So I've got the video. This is all basically one scene here though that I've got, and I've got um, all the scene numbers in here. Have some with audio attached. This has got sync sound attached to it, and then it has uh, a couple MOS files here. And like I said, we will be going over syncing audio in the next episode. And then I have this final effect here for the mirror mirror effect. But basically, the premise of the story is there is and and in, in that uh, download there will have there'll be provided a script as well, and the script will kind of go over uh, what happens in the movie. It's just like a one page script. This ends up being about about a two-minute movie, about a minute, minute and a half to two minutes, uh, when edited, edited, edited together. But well, basically, this is about some girl that's home, home alone, and she hears a knocking on, 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 and she hears a knocking on a window, and she gets up and walks over to the, the window and looks out, and then uh, nothing's there. She sits back down, and then she hears knocking a couple more times, and she keeps getting up and checking out the window to see what this is. And finally, in the end, uh, she realizes that the knocking is not coming from the glass outside, uh, outside the window. It's coming from a, a mirror inside the room, and she looks over and sees herself in the mirror and the person in the mirror knocks on the glass so and it's just a reflection of herself so anyway it's supposed to be a creepy little story but it is is it's it's a good it's a good story to to kind of get into some editing here but i'm going to go under assembly mode i like to kind of assemble my stories in assembly mode first of all uh get the, get the basics down and then we're gonna and then we can start uh trimming this and fine-tuning it later so i'm going to start off with my video folder here double click on it i like my so now i've got my project window my video folder i like this in my in thumbnail view i keep my project in list view this is just my preference i always keep my project in list view and then when I open up my scene folders I like my scene folders in thumbnail view here or what Premiere calls icon icon view all right but uh, first of all I'm just going to grab one of these clips I'm going to drag it and drop it onto my timeline and generate a timeline I'm going to select this clip now and delete it because I don't need it in, need it in there I just needed to generate a timeline now I'm going to go back to my project window arrow down and I'm going to grab my scene one, take one, and a timeline here. That's what it named it after the clip. I'm going to drag it down here out of the time, out of the folder. So now I can see my, my timelines that I have in here as well. I'm going to keep this nicely organized. Uh, and I'm going to call this uh, just final edit. Because like I said, th this uh, project does not have multiple scenes. It's just the one scene. It's all, all scene one, essentially. All right, now that I got my timeline created and pulled out of that folder, I'm going to go to my video tab and I'm going to start editing. And, the, and Oftentimes, the best take, and it's not always the case, that you might want to go through the footage and find out which, which footage is the best. I've already gone through it. I know that the fourth take is out of uh, uh, shot one, take one, take two, take three, take four. Is the, the take four is the best one out of these. So I'm going to, I'm going to select this one here, uh, and I'm going to hit Shift-O and open that up. And you can also double-click on it, and we'll open it up in the source panel here. Uh, and then I'm going to go through and find where I want this to start. And this starts with... Starts with this little dolly move, kind of an establishing shot here. And this is also a master shot. Master shot is basically usually a wider shot that shows the entire scene from beginning to end. And that's what this is. And we're going to be using it, cutting to other things like close-ups and medium shots and inserts to kind of uh, tell the story here. But after the dolly starts moving here, I'm going to hit I for endpoint, play through it. And let's say we want to cut right before the knocking. And there's the knocking. Uh, and I'm probably going to take out that knocking later because I want a little bit. I want this dolly to kind of come to a stop before she looks up. So I'm just going to kind of 
to pretend like the knocking's not there yet and before she let, put, lifts up her head. So I'm going to put O for out point, and that's my shot right there. I'm just going to kind of lay each individual shot in here that I, I want in, order, in, in the order that I want to tell the story. So I'm going to hit period to drop it into my timeline. And right now, now that I'm in my timeline, I got that shot in my timeline, I want to zoom up on this a little bit. So I'm going to hit plus, 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 so I can, and then I'm going to hit shift plus. Shift plus will increase the track height. So now I'm kind of set up, ready to go. And I, and now from this shot, uh, the script basically says there's a knock on the window, she looks at the window. So there is an over the shoulder shot here, uh, right here of look, looking at her toward the window. Because when she walks, we're, we're, there's there's the mirror right there that actually has the knocking sound that it's, coming from, that it's coming from. But we want to kind of make the audience think that it's coming from the window at first. So I'm going to cut over the shoulder here. So I'm kind of doing this. Uh, we could cut to like this medium shot here. We could cut to like the, the medium medium shot here or the close up here when, when she looks up from her book. But then we're not seeing what she thinks they're knocking where the knocking is happening. Or we could cut to this one and you hear the knocking and then cut over the shoulder. Let's see how that works. So I'm gonna forward into this shot here. I'm gonna press play on my space bar. I'm gonna hit L, L, L to speed up a bit. And that right there, she's got her playing with the pages. I want that part where she first looks up. That's not it right there. She's looking over at the director there. So right there is where she looks up, right here. So here's the knock and then she looks up. So I'm going to include that knock in there. I'm going to put I for endpoint, and then she looks up. And then I want to cut to over the shoulder. So I put O for out point, period, to drop that in. And uh, let's see what we got here now. And I got that knock sound twice. So what I can do here is if I want to get rid of that sound right now, that's bugging me and I want to get rid of it. I can, if I grab this and try to shorten it at all like this, it's going to drag both video and audio. So I'm going to hold down Alt, or it would be Option on a Mac. And look at that. That detaches the audio from the video temporarily. And it uh, pulls that back there. And we got rid of that audio. In fact, we might even be able to borrow. We might even be able to borrow audio from this and do what's called a J cut here. I'm going to grab this and drag it over. Let's see. Yeah, and right there, I've got just that blank um, sound, and then it knocks. So we got the audio filling in the spacer. So okay. So then she looks up, and right about there, we I want to go over the shoulder. So actually, I'm going to get this to the end of the clip here. I'm going to uh, arrow down and get to the end of the clip, or hit end on my keyboard. And I'm going to go down and grab, uh, take two is likely the best take here of over the shoulder. So we're going to go to the first knock here. And see, actually, this D1 has a little bit wider shot of the window here, so we can just have her sitting there looking at the window, and then she gets up. So let's, I'm just going to go right there, end point. Out point, period. So just so this is what it'll look like. So you hear the knock. She looks up. We go over the shoulder to show what she's looking at. So now after we go over the shoulder and we've cut to the shot of her looking at the at the window here, uh, we probably want to cut back to her her reaction. Um, at first she ignores it that she hears a knock again and she then she finally gets up to go investigate. So I'm gonna go back to this shot here. And from this shot, I have my previous in and out point when she first looks up from her book. Uh, but now we've given it a beat, and she's going to look back down to her book and ignore it. So I'm going to press play and reset my end point here. So right there, she kind of does it twice. I'm just going to get where she does it once. Let's go back a couple frames here, right where she's looking up there. End point, period, to play. And then she looks back down to her book. And let, I'm going to let it go to where she, she hears a knock, and she finally gets up and moves. And out over, out point, and period, to drop that in. Okay, let's show you guys how to do a proper match here, because I'm going to go to the wider shot here, where she stands up. So the take four here. All right, and I want to get it where she stands up, because she stands up here and starts walking away. I'm going to get that same same point, but what I want you to notice, be really careful, because when you're editing to this, look in the mirror here, you can see a camera operator. And there's a couple, they took them two or three times, and they finally got it right, where they didn't have the person in the reflection there. So you see them again there, and uh, somewhere around this area. I think this one is one where she stands up here. And hopefully we don't see anybody here. And the mirror is clearer, so yes. All right, so J to rewind. K to stop. Press play. End point. She's standing up, walking away. And she looks out the window there. O for out point. Period to drop it into the timeline.
Okay, so now we've got this here. She stands up, but look at this. We've kind of got a mismatch where she stands up twice. So if we want to fix that, one of the best ways of doing that, after I've got my assembly mode done, let's pretend i got the whole thing done from beginning to end. Now I'm going through and trying to fix the timing on things. I'm going to hit Shift-T. I've shown this in the previous episode, the episode on dynamic trimming. I'm going to move my mouse over this window. Hit tilde so it goes bigger so you can kind of see what I'm doing. But what i got to do is get a matching point. Maybe I'm going to do it right where her butt kind of leaves the seat here. Let's see if we can find that point here. She's there. She her butt's still on the seat, and there she's leaning forward. Maybe right about there, her butt is lifting up off the seat. So that's a good matching point. This is not where we're going to have our edit at, but I am changing these edit points here. This is called ripple editing to get it to that point where her butt sits up right about there, and that's likely a match right there. Uh, so let's take a look at that. It matches, but that's not where I want my edit to happen. So I'm going to jump back up, arrow up, Shift T to jump to this. And now I will go in the middle here, and rather than do a ripple edit over here and here on the out point or the in point, I'm going to do a roll edit, which will change both the in and out point. If you don't understand this, go back to the dynamic trimming episode and watch that. Really recommend it so you kind of know what, what I'm doing here. Here I'm just kind of getting into the end, just full on editing here. So I want this a little bit earlier. I'm going to drag this backwards, and maybe right where she starts to set the book down, let's see if it looks like it matches here. Maybe right about there, and her hand is kind of parted away from the, the book about the same same distance there, so that's probably a good edit. Let's see now what th that looks like. That looks pretty good. Okay, that edit looked good. All right, so th those are kind of the, just the basics on editing here, put, compiling a scene together. I've already done an episode kind of like this, but what I want to do with this one here is I'm going to take this kind of uh, from beginning to finish. I will do perform the I will get the edit done on this. You don't need to see the whole thing that I'm doing. You're welcome to take the exercise files and do the same thing, get an edit made out of this, and then later on I'm going to be teaching how to do a sound mix on this, how to do uh, how to uh, clean things up, maybe like uh, with the, the beginning dolly shot, do some stabilization, and get things really kind of nice and smooth and clean throughout, and then uh, show how to color grade, add graphics, and finalize this whole thing. Uh, and, and finalize this whole thing. The next episode isn't going to be following this one right now. I'm going to go into dialogue syncing next episode and then a dialogue editing technique after that. And then we'll get back to this and continue ex uh, and then continue explaining how to do sound mix, color grading, all that stuff, and cleaning this thing up. So thanks for watching. You can download the exercise files and practice with this if you wish. And uh, if you have any questions, post them and let me know. Thanks.